In this video, you're going to learn how to implement projectile based guns into our existing scriptable object based gun system that has so far only let you do hit scan based guns. Hit scan or raycast shooting is very effective and very performant because it's a single raycast per shot. However, there are some gun types such as grenade launchers, rocket launchers, and sometimes you just want like a rifle or something to use realistic bullet physics or more realistic bullet physics with things like bullet drop, for example. Those are significantly more challenging to do with raycast shooting, so sometimes it's just a lot easier to throw a rigid body on there and let it go and let the Unity Physics system handle that for you. That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you! Make your game dev dreams become a reality by allowing you to make different gun types for your game. Depending on your type of game, you might want a bunch of different guns that all use projectile based bullets, and you may have some that use projectile based bullets and some that use hit scan. It's okay to mix the two in your game. That's not really a big deal. It really depends on the use case and how you want that gun to work. Remember that this is part six of the gun series, so we're building on top of stuff we've already implemented. Specifically, the shoot configuration and the gun scriptable object are going to be highly impacted by the changes we're making today because we want to optionally allow us to in the shoot config say hey we're going to use hit scan or we're going to use projectile based bullets and then if we are using projectile based bullets we need to have a bullet object what we'll do is take that bullet object that will have a live model behavior on it won't be fully scriptable object because we need to interact with the physics system. So we'll need to get like an on collision enter callback from the physics system and then propagate that back to our gun system so we can handle things like applying damage, playing particle systems, sounds, that kind of stuff. Once we have that bullet and the shoot config that will allow us to do that, in our gun scriptable object, all we're gonna do is go in there and modify a little thing where we're doing the shooting with Raycast, spawn a bullet instead, fire it off in the direction that we wanna go. At a high level, those are the changes we're gonna be making today. But before we jump into the code, a lot of people will frequently have problems with rigid body physics, where the rigid body is moving very quickly and it will like pass through a wall. There's a couple ways that you can handle that. And the one we're gonna use is by changing the rigid body collision detection to be a continuous dynamic. Unity has some documentation on this on when you might wanna use continuous dynamic and when you might wanna use continuous speculative. Now, both of these should prevent your bullets from flying through an object with a collider on it. They both behave a little bit differently. And I've got a link to the Unity documentation on this where continuous dynamic, if you have a very high angular velocity, it might miss that collision, which is probably pretty unlikely with our bullets. They're probably more going in linear velocity. Still, it's possible. Continuous speculative, it's less likely that you will have that where the bullet will fly through an object but it may also incorrectly detect that it should have hit something when it shouldn't have. So I would highly recommend you check out that page if you're having weird collisions or missing collisions to maybe play around with these two different ones and see which one makes more sense for your game. Now we've talked about what are we gonna do and why we're gonna do it this particular way. Let's hop into the code and start making those changes. Let's start with the bullet class. A couple key things we need here is a rigid body because it's gonna be doing rigid body physics. A public vector three spawn location. We'll have a public git and a private set. I'm gonna serialize that as a field colon serialize field that'll make it show up in the inspector, mostly so we can see what's going on in case we need to debug something. And importantly, we'll make a public delegate void collision event that accepts a bullet and a collision. Now we'll have a public event collision event on collision. This is what we're going to raise whenever we impacted some object. On awake, we'll get a reference to that rigid body. We'll make a new public void spawn that accepts a vector three spawn force, and we'll expect to call this immediately after we've gotten it from an object pool. We'll set the spawn location to be wherever our current location is. We'll set the transform forward to be the spawn force normalized. Then we'll do rigid by add force with this spawn force to kick it off and have this rigid body start flying. We're then going to start a coroutine to delay disable, and I'm passing in a variable two here, which for most cases is probably fine, you can also put this at the bullet level and we can configure it so we can change it on the prefab. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's not do something bad. The reason for this is if you miss and just shoot off into the ether, this bullet will never disappear because we're only going to disable it whenever we make impact. So we want to have some other way where if we miss and never hit anything, it'll go away and we don't just have like a million bullets slowing down our game. In that delayed disable, we'll just yield return a new wait for seconds and then call on collision enter, passing in null. It might seem a little bit weird right now, but once we get into actually 
how these are going to work, it'll make a little bit more sense. Then we'll implement the private void on collision enter, which accepts a collision. In there, we're just going to call the callback on collision, invoking with this for the bullet, and then that collision that we got, or null if we didn't hit anything. The last thing we need to do in here is on disable. So whenever we're disabling this game object, which will happen after we make collision. We want to stop all the coroutines so we don't do the delayed disable. I don't know if that's actually necessary. Rigidbody.velocity to zero, rigidbody angular velocity to zero, and set on collision to null. That way we're resetting everything. We're not going to have any weird residual velocity and we've removed the callback. So the next time it's reused from an object pool, we won't have multiple callbacks to call. So not too much going on here. We're really just going to call a callback whenever we hit the collision. Next, let's open up the shoot config to handle whenever we're going to use a bullet versus using the hit scan. At the top, we'll define public bool is hit scan, set it to be true by default because so far we've mostly implemented those, a public bullet, bullet prefab, which we'll use when hit scan is false, and a public float, bullet spawn force, and we'll set that to be a thousand by default. Nothing else changes about how we calculate spread or anything like that, so we don't need to do anything else here. Let's go to the gun scriptable object towards the top because we may need some bullets. We'll make a bullet object pool. Then whenever we're spawning the gun, we'll create that object pool only if we're not a hitscan gun. All the way at the bottom near where we created the trail renderer, we'll make a new private bullet, create bullet, and we'll just instantiate that bullet prefab. Remember, this is called whenever we need to get new objects from an object pool and we don't have any available. Now here in try to shoot is where we're doing the ray casting, right? Because this already is kind of a big function, what I'm going to do is clean this up a little bit. Everything in here, up until we actually do the raycast, we need to do regardless if we're going to do a hit scan or a raycast shot. We still want to check about the ammo, playing the out of ammo clip, calculate the initial click time, all that kind of stuff. So once we've subtracted some ammo, I'm going to check if shoot config is hit scan is true. Then I'm going to call a new function called do hit scan shoot. And I'm going to pass in the shoot direction here. And I'm going to cut and paste everything that was just there into that function. So no change in the logic. It's going to do whatever we did before. Now, if shoot config is hit scan is false, we need to do the projectile shooting. So let's do the exact same thing. Do projectile shoot, pass in the shoot direction and define that function. In here, we'll just get an object from the pool with bullet bullet equals bullet pool dot get. We'll set it to be active. We'll add a handler to that on collision to be called handle bullet collision. We'll set up the position to be at the front of the gun where that shooting system transform position is. And then after we set it up, we'll call bullet dot spawn, passing that shoot direction times the shoot config bullet spawn force. So the shoot direction, remember, includes the spread. So we'll be offset from straight forward in some capacity. And we're gonna multiply that by the bullet spawn force to give us how hard and in which direction we're gonna be shooting this bullet. Then we'll just get a trail render from our trail pool and set it up very similarly to what we did whenever we did a raycast shooting. But this time we don't need to animate the trail because it's going to be going with a rigid body. So we're just gonna set it to be a child of the bullet transform, set its local position to be zero, meaning the center of the bullet, tell it to be emitting, and then set it to be active. So let's define that handle bullet collision next. In handle bullet collision, we'll first get the trail render that's a child of the bullet with children trail render, and we'll check that that's not null. If it's not null, what we want to do is unparent the trail from the bullet because we're going to immediately disable the bullet now to remove the physics object, but we want the trail render to continue playing until it's done doing whatever it's going to do. And we start this coroutine to delay disable the trail while we'll out to finish playing and then disable it. And we'll implement that in just a second. We'll set the bullet game object active to be false. We'll release it from the bullet pool. And then we'll check if that collision is not null. Because if it is null, remember we didn't make impact with anything. So we don't want to actually do an impact effect. So at this point, there'd be nothing left to do. If there is a collision, then we want to get what did we make contact with. With contact point, contact point equals collision dot get contact zero. Now in a single frame, you could potentially make contact with multiple different colliders. The order of these is not guaranteed. You may want to consider iterating over all the contact points and then having some game logic to determine what should happen in those cases. In most cases, there should only be one contact point, but it is possible to have more than one. 
This has all the information about what do we make contact with. So from here, we would want to do the same thing that we just did whenever we made impact with the Raycast hit, right? Have the service manager do something, make whatever we hit take damage, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to call a new function that we're going to implement and refactor a little bit called handle bullet impact that will need how far did we travel? What do we make contact with? Where do we make contact? And what's the normal of what we make contact with? Let's do that one first, and then we'll go back and do the delayed disable trail. In this handle bullet impact, we'll accept a float distance traveled, a vector three hit location, a vector three hit normal, and a collider hit collider. Most of these we need for that surface manager. So we'll do surface manager instance handle impact, hit collider game object, hit location, hit normal, impact type, and zero for the triangle index. Now remember, I haven't covered the surface manager in this series. There's another video where I went over how do we set up the surface manager, how does it work, how should you integrate it into your game. There's a link in the description and a card on the screen for that video. This is how we play surface effects and audio whenever an impact is made. After we let the surface manager play that impact, we'll then try to get the damageable component from that hit collider. And if there is something that's damageable, we'll say damageable.take damage, and then the damage config get damage based on that distance travel. This should look extremely familiar if you've been following along in the series. We did that above in the play trail coroutine because we played a trail and waited until that trail quote made impact unquote to give a more realistic feel that damage was applied only after the bullet would have made it whenever we did raycast shooting. So we can actually remove this code from the play trail and instead just call handle bullet impact. So now we're doing the same thing whether we're hitting with a raycast or if we hit with an actual bullet. Great. Let's go ahead and finish up with private I enumerator delayed disable trail that accepts that trail renderer. We'll just do yield return new wait for seconds, trail config dot duration to make sure that it will continue to play until it's done. Yield return null to wait that one extra frame, set it to be emitting false, disable it, and then release it from the trail pool. That's really the only changes here. Not a lot of new stuff, a little bit of refactoring. Let's get into the Unity editor where we'll set up the M4 to shoot with projectile bullets instead of a hit scan and see the difference. I'll create a new empty game object, label it bullet, attach a rigid body and the bullet script. Now one really important thing is that on the rigid body, we change collision detection to continuous dynamic or continuous speculative, both of which have their own pros and cons. I spoke about this in the intro, so if you skip that part, I recommend you go back and understand the difference between these, or just check out the Unity documentation page that's linked in the description. We also need to attach a collider to this bullet. I'm going to choose a relatively small box collider, and I'm not going to attach any renderer to this. We're going to see the bullet with the bullet trail, and most likely I'm not going to notice that I see the bullet one way or the other. Another important thing here now is because we're going to actually be using a game object that needs to make collision, we need to set up a physics layer for our bullets. We can go to project settings, tags and layers, and in here create a new layer. Actually, I have some leftover one from a previous project that I copy pasted over, so I'm going to rename this attack radius one to be bullets. Now that we have our own layer for bullets in project settings physics, we have this collision matrix. What we'd want to do is make sure bullets only collide with specific things and not everything. Like most likely we don't want bullets to impact each other. Maybe we don't want them to be able to hit the player, but we can say bullets can impact default, which will have the majority of the world, enemies, and the floor. This will vary depending on your game. So we'll update this bullet to be on the bullet layer. We'll make sure that all the enemies are on the enemy layer. And then I'll make that bullet into a prefab. For my M4 shoot config, I will turn off is hit scan and drag this bullet here. And I'm gonna leave the bullet spawn force at a thousand and see how that works. If we click play, hopefully everything will work correctly for us. We can see that a thousand spawn force isn't ideal, seems like it might be a little bit too low, or my bullet's too heavy. Since mass is supposed to be defined as kilograms, one is probably pretty high for a bullet. So let's put it at 0.1, try it again, that looks more reasonable. So that works really well, we get a really similar result to what we saw with the hit scan gun, but now we're actually using a real rigid body physics for it. This can of course be extended so you can have other kinds of guns. For example, maybe you want to implement a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher. Those probably don't make sense for a hit scan because you'd want them to have like bullet drop and that kind of stuff. So with a rigid body physics, a rocket, for example, may fall relatively quickly to the ground and you can get cool effects with that. So because it does take a little bit of time to get a rocket launcher 
set up and I didn't want to spend a whole nother video going over how do you create all the scriptable objects we've already done. I set this up and it's in the GitHub repository. You can check it out. Remember, full projects always on GitHub, link in the description. You can play around with this rocket launcher, see how it was implemented and extend any functionality that you need in your game based on that. Now, those of you with a really keen eye probably noticed that the only way for us to apply damage even with a rocket launcher is direct impact with the rocket launcher rocket making impact with something so that explosion particle system we see doesn't do anything so i can shoot right next to the enemy and they take no damage it's not really a good result for a rocket launcher or grenade launcher where it's usually an explosion right this kind of thing is more of a post damage action that should be applied to something and that's something coming really soon in the gun series where we're going to look at different modifications that can happen to your gun so far everything is it works one way ever. But frequently in games, you'll see things like we can add an attachment like a red dot sight or like an under barrel thing to give you some new ability, something like that to modify how the gun behaves using that same system that we will be implementing. You can also add effects like explosion effects or poison gas spawning or frost effects, all, all kinds of different like bullet impact effect type things that happen after you would do damage or even before you do damage. If you want to check that out and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy or just click the join button right here on YouTube. You can get your name up here on the screen. You get a voice shout out starting with the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Paul Berry, and Ify Obelis. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I'm incredibly grateful.